Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Yoka, Janice Reed, our spiritual advisor and intuitive, joining us here today live to help so many in so many ways. She's blessed from above, and she's here today blessing us with her presence. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I feel so blessed. (laughs) Aw, thank you. Same here. Yeah, I can. Uh, my electricity works. The The wood stove has got wood for it. Got a little oil in the tank in case it gets really cold. And snow is just pouring, just like my dream said it would. Oh, really? What type of dreams have you been having? Well, they've been prophetic lately. Uh, dreaming for someone is one of the services I provide. I am that good. Um, but periodically, spirit decides to dream for, make me dream for myself. Um, I know that because of particularities in the dreams and that they come out of nowhere when I'm not really asking to help anybody. Spirit helps me. And the last couple of dreams I've had have been very quickly proven to be prophetic. And so I wanted to share those and say a little bit about something about working with your dreams. Dreams do come true. Uh, Mostly we don't think they come true because we aren't really looking at them in the best way Uh, we're looking for what we think we see instead of just looking for what's there so i wanted to offer up these couple of dreams uh so that i could leave you with something to think about Um, Mm -hmm. the the first one is pretty short and um it happened i woke up on january 12th having woken up from this particular dream wow It was short. It was intense. The flames were so hot. That's what woke me up. Now, I realize we're in a blizzard here, so I'm waking up because it's too hot. But in that dream, I shared with some of the other dreamers I'm in touch with part of it. I didn't tell them all of it because who wants to share the goopy parts? But in the dream, the background was on fire, the buildings, the scaffolding. It was just fire and blazing buildings. And in front of it, my husband had pulled up about a 1944 Edsel, big black rounded automobile before they became cars, right in front of the fire. And uh, he pointed it towards the, the right, which for me is future. And then he presented me with a silver car seat. I'm very small. And he wanted me to be able to see over the hood. So even in my dreams, my husband can be funny with me. When I, woke up, <laughs> when I woke up that morning, of course, I shared the bit about the car and the, and the car seat. And people really liked that. And they thought, ha, ha, ha. Later that day, though, I turned the news on. And I was greeted with those flames and scaffolding on fire and the war. It wasn't a similar image. It was the same image. In that image, the only difference was that there was a burned up fire truck or something in the picture where that big black car would have been getting me out of there. So I sat on that and I figured I was being tapped. Uh, Something spirit does for me, maybe you too, to tell me to get ready because there's more dream coming and I was to be prepared. The immediate mm, proof that the dream was based in something real came when I turned on the news and saw exactly the image. So the next night I was prepared. I woke up on the 12th on that one. On the morning of the 13th, I woke up and there was a second dream. Today's the 15th. So I had all day yesterday to think about this. Also yesterday was my husband would have been his 80th birthday. So he was helping. But in this dream, I was in a large, older home, snow truck going by, and in this house were various members of the camp. Uh, We used to call one of the places a big house because it had campsers surrounding it. These were some of the older original campers in the house, visiting and getting along and, and hanging out in the rooms and just being happy with one another. It was a good thing. So I stopped by the store on my way to the house, to that house from my own, and picked up some ice cream. I got a couple of really, I got a brand new fresh pistachio flavor, something about a chocolate cream or creme. 
and I brought these delicious gourmet frozen treats with me to the house to share with the other campers who were camping in the house. They weren't out in the yard. When I got there, word got out I had brought these ice creams. And so some of the campers, being campers and wily, wanted to buy the ice cream so they could take it themselves (laughs) and not share. So I offered it up at twelve hundred dollars for all of the ice that all the ice cream, all both boxes, you could have it, twelve hundred bucks. Cause who would bite on that, right? And they said, Oh great, oh great, we'll go get the money. And they took off to go find the money, ostensibly. And I was bragging and giggling because what I was about to make a fortune off these two little small packages of ice cream because they were gourmet special flavors. When I looked out the window, the kitchen window there and saw soldiers coming. And we're in the mountains. Oh. The mountains are pretty steep. The trees are sn- being snowed on. That's why we were all in the house and not out in tents. And soldiers are coming on horseback in blue coats. That could be important. As they came towards the house, word got ahead of them that they were coming with bombs. They were coming with weapons. And somebody had let slip that the soldiers thought I had offered to buy those bombs. They got the money. Wow. 1200 bucks for ice cream. And now I'm being accused of selling bombs. The soldiers came to the house and the house was so crowded. Everybody was in the kitchen where everybody always hangs out. And I wanted to get out of the house to escape, but it was so crowded. Nobody, I'm so short. Nobody saw or heard me trying to get out of just so I was wedged. So I held up a hot pie in my hands, you know, fresh out of the oven and yelled, everybody out. It's a bomb. They heard that. Part. Wow. The Everybody just fled out the back door. Most of them fled underneath a wooden carport separated from the house out in the parking lot. I went wow. into the park. I went under the shed, left off the pie for people to eat and <laughs> kept going out the other side and up into the snowing mountains. I didn't want to be arrested for this weird story. As I ran up the hill in the mountains, the snow was starting to pour down. I mean, it's just powder, fresh powder. It looks like just like fresh powder. As I ran up the mountain, I saw the third camper. There were three of them that were really interested in those two boxes of ice cream. One of them was ahead of me on the trail. He Uh. wore he wore buckskin moccasins. Oh, and my leather. gosh. He wore a bright red loincloth. His upper body was greased against the snow, and he had on a light eagle feather headdress carrying a little light sword. And under one arm, wow. he carried <sighs> he carried the football. You taking notes? Yes. This man is carrying the football, and he is running up the mountain with it, Ooh. hiding weapon he's gonna he's the one that stole the weapon mm. up and he almost disappeared into the snow running up ah <laughs> behind him I, I came back down the mountain to the house because I knew that whatever happened I'd be okay and I I asked great spirit I to can't. keep me safe as I started to come back down the mountain I looked behind me and there was a soldier on horseback following that third camper who now looked like an Indian runner up the mountainside on horseback and again, I asked that he be kept safe. I came back down into the house where the old man that also lived there and visited there had said he'd come out and talk to the soldiers. But at that point, he said he was tired. He wasn't going to run again. And he went back in the house and he waited on the soldiers to come to him. Wow. Outside, I heard the wolves. And when I looked, they too were on that same trail following the runner, following the man on horseback Mm -hmm. with a wolf pack, following the trail. I knew that as soon as the soldiers found me, they would confiscate whatever they could have. And so I jumped in my big car and I drove to my house. When I got to my house, I prepared for the soldiers to come. And I went when I finished and laid in my bed near the entrance, more snow plows, Ah. covered myself up with my blanket and waited. Yeah. When the soldiers arrived, they burst in with their great big heavy bodies into my little tiny Hogan. 
and demanded to know where the thing was that I had stolen. Then I sighed and pointed to the back of the Hogan and said I had it was back there and I was really sorry. I did, I knew it was wrong to steal, but but since they were there, I would I would tell the truth. And yes, the thing I had stolen was in the back of my Hogan. Mm -hmm. so they all burst towards the back further deeper into the woman's Hogan to the bed on the other side where they found the traditionally dressed female doll. They picked up this little doll at ah. the side of a Barbie and they stormed back up to Whoa. me and shook it at me and said, what is this? I said, that's what I stole. Oh my gosh. Called me a crazy woman, threw down the doll and they left and they went back to the house. Ah. I don't know what the old man had told them, but they were returning to the house. And as they left outside, I could hear the victory song of wolves, which is what woke me up. The and this was a dream or this did this really happen? I feel like yes. it really happened though. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I dream in technicolor. Right, so right. Like, like have a feel you were really like that really happened though. Yeah. I mean dreams yeah. when you say the word dream, it's like, well, was it really a dream? Or is that a really for me it was prophecy. I see yes, it as that's such. the word. Mm -hmm. I see the two can you see where the two dreams are connected in a special way? Each that's of them. Each of them used older technology. The one was an old car for transportation. Wow. The other wasn't just horseback. It was a man on foot. Mm -hmm. older, older technology, I predict, will provide the way out of this conflict here in our country. Mm -hmm. The old man is tired. He doesn't want to run anymore. He wants people to choose and decide. Do they want destruction? Do they want the bomb or do they want freedom? The Indian had disappeared. The runner had disappeared into a cave in the snowfall and I lost sight of him. I never saw him again, oh. nor did I see the soldier on horseback, though I heard the wolves sing their success. They captured something. So who did they capture? Who were the blue coats? Who exactly is the old man? These are the questions I sat with yesterday that I thought I would bring today to talk about wow. a little about dreams. In uh. dreams, spirit speaks to us in dreams using characters, words, and situations that we are familiar with enough to understand. Mm. If I was to look at either dream straight up, well, that truck was black, blackened from the flames, the old car, but the flames were real. It was wow. picture, picture recreation. The second one, I'm still turning over in my mind. <laughs> The two dreams both relied on older technology. Each of them was dodging destruction. Each of them provided a way out. How will that be? The first part of the dream, the campers, of the second dream, the campers, the football, the ice cream, we did all that at camp. Yes, we did. And yes, there was a big kitchen we'd all crowd into. Yes, I did bring horse over there. I, I, we brought our horse so that every, the little kids could ride on it. Yes, outside my window is that trail in my dreams. Yes, deers use it. And at the top, there's a little cave. I've dreamed of that cave before. So I apologize. That's my son who just stepped into the camera. Say hi. Well, He's off of school hi. today. <laughs> good. Good. Lucky child. Well, Robert, he has dreams too, huh? We all have dreams. Isn't that crazy? It is. It is. But there are some of them, some dreams help us get past our overload. Yep. They're really, they're really just little pressure valves that uh. let off steam. You know, we wanted to smack them. We weren't allowed to smack them, but in our dreams, we get to smack them. <laughs> or, you know, or we wanted to pull them and save them, but in reality, we weren't able to save them. For me, 
because these two dreams, short and then long, came one after the other, I know that I am following a plan. I'm being shown future. I can sit here and tell you all about the different dreams that I've dreamed for other people that came true for them. And you can believe me or not believe me. So I brought the second dream so that I could show you the raw material so that listeners listening might pay attention to the news these next few days and find for themselves how the dream reflects reality, how it oh. mirrors what's going on. Oof. What do you think? You want to play that game? <laughs> How often do you have dreams like this, by the way, and you remember everything so vividly? Because I've been dreaming like this since way before, well, since I could walk underneath since the kitchen table. Since you remember, I was going to say. since Yeah, since as far as I can remember. It took me a long time when I was small to realize sometimes that it, the dream and reality were separate. You know, what other people called reality was still a part of my dream and vice versa. I've that's one of my own peculiarities. I've never really separated from spirit. I'm still there, half one foot here and one foot there. Ah, oh, that's that's a an amazing gift. Are there ever days you wake up and you don't dream, or because of your yes. ability? There is. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. so there is some peace yes. and quiet. So I'm like yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. In fact, it's been it had been quiet for a few days, and I should have known something was coming because it had been quiet when the first dream appeared and uh, I would have just dismissed it as my own fury with what's going on in the world. Had I not turned the television on and seen it, I mean, pixel for pixel, there it was. It wow. was the same fire, the same building, the same structures. <sighs> I oh. can't wait for what I dreamed tonight. I was going to say any, any prediction on what's happening with this presidential election? Well, I don't know, but you know, there's a blizzard in Des Moines and the caucuses are going to go out in that snow where people will disappear into the darkness of the snow. Uh, I hope people stay safe. Um, and I wonder which old man is too old to run anymore. Which one of the old men? And somehow there were two campers that in effect fell on their swords when the when the soldiers came, I missed this part. When the soldiers came to find the bomb, they saw two campers running, and they ran over on their horses and captured those two campers without realizing that those two young men were running as a distraction, and they let themselves be caught, so so that the third one could do the running. Mm. Now, little, little point here on history. That, Interesting. That might be fun to know when a runner runs in the snow certain tribes smart enough to know cover themselves not in heavy clothing but in bear grease mm. the body warms the bear grease and the body stays warm and it breathes and it's lighter so that it can go on top of the snow instead of be heavy with really heavy buckskins and and blankets and yeah, when a runner wants to run, he doesn't want to carry the weight. He wants to get there fast. Perhaps he uh, gave himself to spirit. Perhaps he found a safe place. But that bomb was not seen. It was gone. He kept it in buckskins. And it looked like a football, which only hit me a little while ago that the nuclear secrets is called a football. As the more I unpack this dream, the more points hit reality and my curiosity is so piqued that I wanted to share it. This is what I live with. <laughs> this is what I do naturally. When I dream for someone else, I, I always put the appointment a day or two ahead because I want time to dream. If I've ever done a reading for you, I've dreamed for you. And that's part of why you got such a good reading. It's because I knew. I teach. Dream. Yeah, I teach dreamers how to dream to get help. Uh, we call it a dream helper ceremony. We get separate people in a circle. Did you read that on purpose or that was just coincidence? No, it's something I do. What What did I read? What do you think I read? 
my shirt. I did see that when you came on. Oh, okay. I'm like, whoa, she really. Oh, my goodness. Somebody tuned you in. What are you, psychic? <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah, it was a good shirt. Good choice. Good choice. Um, yeah, dreams. Dreams are something that everybody has. Little kids from old to old people. There's a particular ceremony we've created. My husband and I worked on together. He invented it and then I, I made it shiny and, and possible. We took it to the degree that it's online now. You can work with different people from different countries at the same time. If you, know, if you want to put one together. We, we bring people into a group. I do. One night. I like to do it in person. The one night we meet, the next day, we have rapport classes. We play together all day long. In the evening, we have dinner together. We cook, have dinner, and after dinner, we circle up and let spirit choose who we will dream for. Because by then, you're not among strangers. You're among people you've known all day. One name is pulled from a hat on a blind pole. Everyone agrees to dream and remember a dream for that person that night. At this point, people who haven't dreamed in 17 years are flooded with dreams that night. Dream recall goes up almost 100%. The, during the night, as people wake from dreaming, they write their dreams down. Just for what they dream, not for what they think they mean. Just write the dreams down. Like, like this one I talked about with the horse and the, and the blue coat. Just what, just the facts, sir, just the facts. And then we meet for breakfast. And after breakfast, we share just the dreams. We go in a circle. The person that we are dreaming for has her back, his or her back turned to us so that we can't look at her face or his face and go, oh, that one struck a nerve. Oop, that one was off. We really get involved in talking about our dreams because in the circle of dreams is the answer to the issue. Exactly. Every dream exactly corresponds to the issue at hand. None of us know what the issue is. We don't know if it's animal, vegetable, mineral. All we know is that it matters to the person we're dreaming for. When we finished sharing our dreams, we've honed it down and done you know, round and round she goes until we have decided among our innocent selves what the problem was what the issue has to do with, and the solutions. Generally speaking, when the person we're dreaming for turns back around to join the group, the tears are all over everywhere, her snot's running, she's so excited, he's so excited because they've heard their answer and they know, they recognize it as the truth and the best course of action forward. And it is. 100% so far for me, I've only run... I don't know, less than 100 circles, but I've gotten them to push out into the universe. We call them dream helper ceremonies. Some people call them dream helper circles. They were created by my husband and this guy named Vandecastle years ago in the early 70s at camp by children. That's how easy they are. Kids are the best dreamers because they don't know enough to put the buffers up and decide what it must mean. They just know what the dream said. There are ways to get help from your dreams. They're not all crazy. Because the second dream of my own is so vivid and full of details. I offer it to you and anyone else listening to let it roll around in your mind because it's going to happen quickly. If the indication from the first dream is true, it's either happening as we speak or it will happen tomorrow, the next day. Something will happen so that absolute destruction is right at our doorstep. And something small, something with less technology than we think we need, takes it away and saves us. Stay tuned. Beautifully yep. said. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. But how can we reach you? Janice Reed, please. Oh, uh, please. I'm going to put this on my Facebook page. I'll write out both dreams so that you can see it. So check out Janice Reed. Uh, it's the, my photograph is actually a, a 
painting done by a friend of mine in Singapore. So it's not a face picture, uh, uh, but look it up. Janice Reed at Facebook. I'll write the dreams down, both of them, as I've written them down and remembered them so that you can go back and read over the details and roll it around in your own mind to see what you come up with. I would love next week to talk and find out who else picked out what I did. What else did people pick out? Mm -hmm. I often overlook the most obvious things. It took me all day until this morning to figure out what the bomb was, what the football was. It's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. So help me out. Help me out. Write me little notes. Write me suggestions. Tell me what you think it means. Beautiful. On Facebook or call me. I'm throwing out a phone number these days. You can call me Eastern Standard Time, 276-579-2883. Give me a call. Tell me you're not a telemarketer or I won't pick up. Leave me mm. your name, your number if I'm not around, and I'll call you back. I will. I, Thank you so you. much. Uh yeah. You're <laughs> welcome. Thank you. I'm hoping I get some help on this. Aww. I'm excited. Uh, oh. All right. Well, thank you so much. A pleasure having you here. And it's Goddess Janice, right? At Hotmail.com. No, it died. So I'm Goddess Janice too. Ah, perfect. Well, we Outlook. figured that out. Thank you. Yeah, Goddess Janice too at Outlook.com. Yep. Thank you yep. so much. Have Outlook. a great day. Thank you, sweetheart. Thanks to all our listeners. Stay Thanks tuned. Me. We'll be right back with more. Bye-bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.